European stock markets are posting modest gains this morning with the UK's FTSE 100 index up around about 80 points, while the Eurostox 50 index is up around about 37 points. In the currency space, the euro is steady against the dollar, still at that 128 uh, level, while um, the yen is uh, weaker against the dollar, the dollar being uh, the more stronger currency on the back of uh, Friday's non-farm payrolls number uh, in the peripheral bond market space, both Spanish and Italian bond yields and Portuguese also uh, continue to inch off um, from last week's highs, uh, while in the commodity space uh, we're seeing a recovery from most uh, precious metals, particularly gold, which is up around about 11 uh, bucks. Where it comes when it comes to um, oil, uh, still pretty elevated on uh, the geopolitical tensions in Egypt. Uh, Nymex still firmly above the $101 mark. Um, and um, in uh, other asset classes such as uh, core government bonds, both uh, UK guilds and German bonds are taking a little higher. Good morning. I'm Mr. Axadiki and welcome to your daily market bite. I'm going to give you a quick idea of what's going on in financial markets today. So <clears throat> we had a um, the non-farm payrolls number out on uh, Friday, um, which was pretty much the, um, the big key event. Uh, investors were, were waiting for to, to, to give them some sort of idea of what the Fed's going to do next. Um, payrolls came in very strong. Uh, the, the U.S. economy added 195,000 jobs last month, uh, much better than expectations for around about 160,000. At the same time, um, the numbers for uh, the prior months for May and April were revised higher. Uh, making the report much stronger. Uh, but the unemployment rate didn't edge down. Uh, it remained at 7.6%. So the initial reaction was one of enthusiasm. Investors um, saw the report as a, a very strong number, uh, rallied uh, with US and European equities moving much higher, only for us to start um, falling in Europe um, on the back of worries that the report may um, give the Federal Reserve more ammo to start tapering quantitative easing a lot quicker than expected. Um, in Europe on Friday, we closed lower on the back of those worries. However, on Wall Street, um, we saw a late session recovery, uh, and that was because investors had a second look at the data uh, and started to see uh, it in more of a favorable right light that it, even though it does suggest that the Fed may taper quantitative easing soon, the US economy is showing a very, very strong, strong sign of recovery, uh, particularly in its labor market. If we continue seeing reports uh, that are similar to this over the next three or four months, uh, it does suggest that the US economy is finally on a very self-sustaining path of, uh, of recovery. Uh, and even though if it means uh, the Federal Reserve are going to take quantitative easing, at least the US economy can stand its own, to, on, on two of its own feet. Um, at the same time, we have to remember that uh, the European Central Bank and the Bank of England um, had very dovish policy meetings on Thursday where they committed to uh, keeping rates at ultra low uh, record levels for an extended period of time. Um, forward guidance is what uh, it's been enabled as, um, giving the market uh, some clarity as to how long they're going to keep their rates lower so we don't see the spike in volatility just ahead of the, um, the, the, the policy meetings. Uh, so investors are uh, also cheering the fact that even though we are seeing the Fed step out of the uh, tapering game, uh, the quantitative easing game with tapering, um, we still have the European Central Bank and the Bank of England uh, providing enough liquidity in the market. Uh, so a positive on that side. Didn't really translate into uh, the Asian session. We had a, a weaker session in Asia, and that was mostly on the back of worries about the Fed tapering. Now for Asia, it's a more of a worry, worrying uh, situation because uh, the Asian markets have rallied so strongly over the last four years, and that's on the back of uh, being the biggest beneficiaries of um, easy Fed money. But now that we've got tapering on the cards, uh, the, 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 the investors would rather park their money into more growth-focused assets and, and pull them away from uh, from Asia and emerging markets, uh, given the fact that um, the, the, the overall outlook doesn't really seem to be as bright as it does for the U.S. We have to remember that the, 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 the Chinese economy is also, also slowing down. Um, so on the whole, we did see a pretty negative session in Asia. That hasn't been the case in Europe this morning. We are firmer, like I said, and we're waiting for some data. Uh, we have German industrial production numbers, which should give us some direction. Otherwise, it's pretty thin on the ground with data. Uh, the big focus this week, of course, will be the start of uh, earnings season with Alcoa not reporting numbers, the big aluminium uh, producer, uh, which is expected to show a pretty 
uh, dull report on the back of China slowdown. Um, conversely, we also have uh, Fed Chairman uh, Ben Bernanke speaking on Wednesday in Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts, and he will be discussing uh, monetary policy and he'll be open for questions and answers after his speech. Uh, so it's pretty certain that investors will be uh, eyeing any sort of commentary regarding quantitative easing, which may give them a chance to second guess the Fed's next move. Um, other than that, not much else going on, so I'll see you tomorrow for another Daily Market Bite. Cheers. Thank you.